so I'm gonna, uh, we just have this one final section on troubleshooting here, and then we're gonna go uh, start talking about airflow and we're gonna actually use the DG8 and do some tests in here and a few things. So uh, hopefully get us standing up uh, before lunch. So one of the final things I'm gonna talk about that's a, that is a mindset thing, uh, but it's one of the best ways that I've, I've come to kind of think about troubleshooting. And this is any anything that you're anything that you're um, struggling with, but e even in career development or even thinking about kind of your path as a technician. And this is the idea of wide, narrow, wide. We'll do, we'll do the application of a of a residential service call. You're showing up. Um, you do not want to go narrow right away. You'll see a lot of guys do this. It's probably the capacitor, it's probably this, it's probably that, right? Don't do probably. Probably uh, will get you going down a rabbit hole that often is not the best place to first, uh, to first commit your energy. There's a fine line here. So when you walk up to a job, you wanna keep your head up. You wanna see what's going on, hear what's going on. Smell sometimes what's going on, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but as you're, walk, as you're walking up to the house or the structure, a lot of times you're going to be able to notice things. Now again, you can't always see uh, the, where the condenser is located, but sometimes you can. You can kind of get a sense of that. And when you're talking to the client, you don't want to initially narrow into what's wrong right now. You want to ask questions that give you that bigger picture. So how has it been running prior to this? When's the last time you had a maintenance done? Have you noticed any other problems in the home? Is it uncomfortable? Have you noticed any humidity issues? You just start you kind of ask them those sorts of big questions, wide questions. Don't try to focus right now on what is wrong right this second. Stay big. And then when you walk up to the thermostat, you're looking, or you're looking around, you're looking at where the vents are positioned, you're noticing, is, is there mold? Do I notice any odors? You're looking at the thermostat. Is it, is it in a good location? Is it in a place where maybe it's being affected by sun? Is there a vent blowing on it, right? What type of thermostat is it? Is it one that maybe sometimes might have a problem or does it look like the, the uh, owner installed it themselves? You're noticing where the returns are located. I like to look up in the returns while I'm there. Do they have filters in them? If they're filter backs, maybe they don't have filters in them, maybe they're missing a filter, maybe the filter got sucked up in. Maybe it's not a filter back, but somebody took the screws, up and, screws out and jammed a filter in there, right? They do that a lot too, especially tenants. They don't know where the filter goes, so they just jam it up in the return. And you're just looking all over. You're paying attention to even things like, like how, are the, how are the vents positioned in the house and what are the size of them? Because you can get a pretty good sense, was this done by a professional or was this sort of like something somebody cobbled together here? Because it's gonna give you an indication. Maybe the whole duct system is jacked up. You know, it gives you a little bit to go on. Then when you go to the air handler, you're noticing a bunch of stuff. And I usually do try to go to the air handler first because it's the center of the system. I'm usually not gonna run right outside, even if I think it's the capacitor. Because even if it is the capacitor or something silly, we don't want to just swap a capacitor and leave, right? That doesn't, that doesn't help. That doesn't, that doesn't work for the business model. That doesn't work for the client. You want to look at the whole picture. So filter situation, what do we got going on with the filter? And again, that changes market to market. It changes client to client. It changes piece of equipment to piece of equipment. And that's where having a big picture view initially, gathering all that information, being a good troubleshooter, because a lot of techs, uh, struggle with this idea of this client communication piece and all this, but if you look at uh, that final wide as being part of being a good tech, right? We all like to solve big problems. That's good, that's what being a good tech is. Uh, the money conversation is part of that because we have to get the customer's approval to be able to do that, right? For us to also to survive. But if you look at it that way, it doesn't have to be so complicated, right? It can be, it can be pretty simple and it, and it starts with confidence. But if we're always just focused on, I want to get the problem right, I want to get the right answer, right? Well, there almost never is just one right answer, right? There is the problem, but then there are other challenges, other problems that could be contributing factors to this problem, or they could be completely unrelated to this, but are also things to think about. Um, one type of technician that we see a lot uh, is the parts changing technician, okay? And the parts changing technician, that doesn't make them a bad person, but the parts changing technician often is very good at following a sequence. Like, all right, when I do a compressor, I do this, then this, then this, then this, then this, right? When I do a board, I do this, then this, then this, then this, then this. The problem with that is, is that you can follow a process perfectly and still get it completely wrong a significant amount of the time. If you don't have your head up 
at the early part and at the end part of the process. The same thing is true with an installer. Okay, a good installer has their procedure and they follow it, but that's when they're in the middle of it. That's when they're in the fire, right? But when you first show up, I see a lot of the worst installers I know in the sense of like their outcomes. They show up on the job and they're just going. They're just immediately yanking stuff out and they're just rocking, right? Because they didn't, that was a really weird dance I just did. I'm kind of sorry, I'm kind of sorry I did that. I just realized, I just like, I, how come none of you said anything? I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I trust any of you now. Um, Cause I had to catch that myself. That's what we do on install, so it felt right. Did it? You just had, yeah, just going, You're just going, yeah. Uh, bobbing and weaving. Um, and the reason is, is because it's really good to be efficient and productive. That's really good. Once you have a game plan and you know what the plan is, you've looked wide first. Like, all right, I want to make sure I've got the right equipment. I want to make sure I know where it's going. I want to make sure I talk to the client and make sure we're all on the same page here about what we're doing, outcomes, all that. And then, okay, we ready? Good. You know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing. Bam, go. Right? Then you get to the end of the project where everything's running. And now you slow down again, and you go wide again, and you look up. You've been working, and you've been in the zone, right? If you do something a lot, you get in the zone. Anytime you do a repetitive task, that's why I can't drive here, because I'm used to driving in the zone. And I'm here, and I'm like, I have to think? This is crazy. I don't know how to think about driving. I just do it, right? And that's actually not a bad example of what I'm talking about, where you get the thing you do a lot, and if you do a thing a lot, and you only do it one way, you're not good at that thing, OK? You have to be able to give yourself space to at the end say, all right, now I'm in test and verify mode, in communicate mode. I'm in, let's make sure, did I set the airflow up properly? Did I set the charge properly? How does this look? Let me look at this with client eyes. Does this actually look right? Because I was down in the weeds, now I gotta step back. Is there garbage laying around? Is I, did, did I, where's the manuals? And to get those together. Okay, let me talk to the client real quick and make sure they're, they're really good. They, you really, you're sure you got it, you got it. Okay, you want me to show you, anything else you want me to see? You're good. Any other questions? Because I want to answer them before I leave. How often do people do that? Versus, I'm telling you, I was this tech early on before I learned this skill. The second I got it working and the client paid, I was gone. Like I did not sit in front of the house, right? So I don't know, do you guys have window tappers here? Do you know what a window tapper is? Okay, a window tapper is when you, you get done with the job, you've collected the money, you sit down in the truck, you're looking for, at your next job, and all of a sudden you hear tap, 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 and you look over and they're there, right? And you roll down the window. What's going on? Well, I, I, I felt the air and it's not blowing as cold as I think it should. I'm not sure if it's, it hasn't dropped temperature yet. And so I learned as a, as a very not great behavior to just leave the house as soon as I got it. I didn't want to sit in front of the house because I was afraid of the window tapper, right? But that is a bad impulse, right? Because you do not want that person to just call the office. That's called a callback. How do you know it's a callback? This is what, because a lot of guys will say, I, do you guys do this here? Well, that's not a callback. That wasn't a callback. Well, here's how you can tell if it's a callback. If they called back, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's called a call back. Right? And so if you have in the mindset, I don't want the client to call back. I want to make sure that they do not call back because I stood there and I waited. We good? I just want to make sure. Did I provide good service today? Great. And that's where you can talk about the review and all that stuff. But don't just rush off. Right? Your head is up. You're paying attention. When you walk outside, you're like, oh, I'm good. I'm good. And you're walking out and all of a sudden you hear the condenser go off. Go back inside. <laughs> hey, I just want to check real quick. You know, maybe the float switch tripped, whatever. You want to verify that it's draining properly. You want to do all of those tests until you are 100% confident that you are not, the client's not going to call back, everything looks good, the yard is clean, there's no wire strippings, there's no pieces of copper, there's no, everything's level. That's that wide view again, right? And that's true of everything that we do. Wide, make a plan, gather information, narrow, get it done. Right, focus, don't get distracted. I struggle with narrow. I'm good at wide. Narrow is like, I get distracted. It's like, oh, bird over here. Oh, hey, the technical, you know, said some thing. And that is not good either. You have to be, to be a good technician, you have to really focus, block out the distractions and focus on what you're doing until you get to that answer and then go wide again. Make sense? And I don't, this is one of these kind of talks that like people will gloss over because it feels very like, Okay, you know, like how does that really apply? But it really does apply. Because you need to be able to check yourself. 
a good technician, a good person. Like if you're gonna be a good uh, leader, you're gonna be a good parent, you're gonna be a good spouse, you're gonna be good at anything. You have to be able to perceive when you're not aligned, right? Like when the way you're being isn't really working. And as a technician or an installer, I guarantee all of you can identify, yeah, there's part, one of those three areas I'm not great at, right? Maybe I'm really good at that initial wide, but I just try to scoot too quick at the end, right? I'm not being as thorough in the end. Or maybe I'm good at the end, but I'm not good at planning when I first show up. Or maybe I'm not good at focusing in the middle and just blocking out distractions and finding that problem or getting that job done. And that's an area that you need to work on, right? And that will make you a better technician, better installer, um, so on and so forth. Go ahead. And sometimes it's, it's just as simple as getting a bottle of water, drinking some water. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Get some energy because sometimes yep. you're affected by how you feel. Yep. And you tend to, you know, ignore things. Yep. And not intentionally, but you're more focused on how you are feeling. Yep. And, you know, you, you get distracted from your actual past. Yeah, and that is, I mean, one thing, this is a really big topic. I'm gonna spend 30 seconds here, okay? Tradespeople in general, anybody who's in the ser any, any kind of service business where you are constantly doing what other people need, you're constantly taking care of other people, um, we can get in really bad self-care habits, like really bad. Um, I have suffered with severe depression. I have suffered, I like a lot of really not great things um, by just not saying no, like in order for me to care for other people well, I need to also care for myself well. And often we get to, the, the, there's this new thing that's happening now. We see it in my business where guys will, they'll work to the point of breakdown and then they'll be like, all right, I just need to find a new job. I need a two week vacation. It's like, how about give yourself little breaks in there, right? Like, it, because a lot of times, it's not like I go to my, my techs and my installers and say like, hey, you need to work yourself to death. Um, whatever you do, don't ever stop. Like, no, of course I don't. I want them to take breaks. I don't want them to stay up in the attic for hours at a time. I don't want, I, like, that's not, that, I don't want that for them. But they start to believe that, right? They start to believe that that means that's what it is to be a good productive worker, and that's not true. You're so much more productive. I mean, and we know this, right? You get enough sleep at night. Right? It's a lot better for your life, right? You drink water uh, more often. You're staying hydrated. You know, maybe a little more water and lemonade and a little less alcohol. You know, like that kind of stuff, right? I mean, it's simple. I know, I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, but it is those kind of little micro decisions. And during the work day, it's about saying, hey, look, I need 15 minutes right now. Like, I need, I, yeah, I need a snack. I need, I'm not doing great. And then, and again, that's that same sort of self-care rhythm that you're giving yourself. You can't stay in that narrow for too long. You'll break down. You have to be able to do that wide, narrow, wide, narrow thing, right? Make sense? Yeah. Any questions, thoughts about that? A lot of little micro habits that make that work for all of you, and I'm not gonna try to dictate what those are. For me, I can tell you, it's been even things like just literally focusing on breathing for five minutes. Like, am I actually, like I've, I've stopped breathing. Like I'm literally just doing short breaths rather than like, whew, you know, like it's, it's, yeah, it's okay. You know, like that kind of thing. It can be really, really helpful. If you were at a customer, let's say you were dealing with a difficult customer, the customer had some issues with company, you got a speed, speed up, up yeah. Right? And you're going to your next job. It's a good habit to just take 10 minutes. Yep. So after you leave that customer, mm -hmm. you reach the next one. Just take 10 minutes, probably watch a little video or something. Sure. Call your wife, call your kids. Yeah. Just kind of change yeah. your mindset. So when you approach that customer, you're, you know, you're, you're more yep. neutral. You're not thinking, oh boy, you know, thinking of what happened before. Because it does affect Oh. Yep, and there's a, um, th there's a line there, right? And so the line is, um, none of us wanna be selfish people, right? None of us are okay with being selfish. Um, and so sometimes that means that we don't give ourselves any self-care. Now, sometimes you'll start to notice, all right, I watched a little video and now it's been 20 minutes, okay. You know what I mean? Like, all right, you gotta kinda rein that in. But that's being an adult, right? That's like taking responsibility for your own actions. Also, everybody's a little different about what works for them. There are some people who are very social. Like I think you talked about this a little bit. My, uh, my brother-in-law, Bert, is very social. And so he needs that human interaction. That's actually what helps him break out of a funk. For me, like when I get done with this, I mean, I love this, I, but I'm a little bit of an introvert. I gotta go back and like just sit 
for a little bit. Just like, I got the ocean now where we're staying. I just look at the ocean for a little bit. I, that's what I need. And so knowing what you need and giving yourself that in order to recuperate is a really, really good practice. Uh, and not being macho about it, like, oh man, well I can handle the next one, and then going and yelling at the next customer doing something stupid, right? <laughs> like that's, because it happens. And you can tell when it's creeping up, right? There's a practice that a lot of people follow, which is they'll have a, a something on the way home, like a mailbox or a fence post or something, and they literally visualize taking their tools and hanging it on that mailbox or that fence post or whatever on their way home. Like, I'm done now, and now I'm, now I'm focused here. And you can do the same sort of visualization. This is stuff, I know this stuff sounds cheesy. But you can do the same thing when you've had a hard moment. It's like, all right, now I'm putting that away. I'm moving forward from this. I'm not going to let that define me. So. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.